around this time last year, I was asked a little bit about the differences in Intel processors, and this was coming from a person that was going to be buying her daughter a laptop for college. So obviously it wasn't going to be used for any crazy performance or anything like that. So I tried to guide her in the right direction, but at the time I didn't really know perfectly what each core meant. And by core, I mean the Core i3, the Core i5, and the Core i7. So the main differences in these aren't extremely obvious. So I'm going to go through and go off a couple differences in each. And if I forget a few, I apologize. I'm not pretending like I'm some crazy genius when it comes to this. I'm just going off what I did research-wise when I built my computer and things that I've learned since building my computer, just talking to people and looking through websites on each different processor. So the Core i3 for desktops is really an entry level processor. It has generally two cores. It does have hyper threading, which means that it can perform similar to a quad core CPU, but it is not, it is, sing is double core, dual core, and it has four processing threads. It has a lower smart cache than the Core i5, but the Core i5 is going to be a little bit more expensive. So the Core i5 is more of the general processor that people get if they are going to do a Intel build. So the Core i5 is a little bit more expensive. It has turbo boost, which means that you can uh, kind of make your computer run faster when it's under load. And it has four uh, physical cores, which means that it is able to do four actual processing threads each on a single core. It does not support hyper-threading, and it has more smart cache than the Core i3. It also has better uh, integrated graphics than the Core i3 typically. I say that because you can get an older i5 that has worse graphics than a newer i3, so I'm not going to get into that for this video because there is different generations of each processor. The Core i7 has Turbo Boost, four cores, and there is actually some six core processors out there that are i7, but those are not generally for normal people to use. Those are for like extreme enthusiasts that are spending thousands of dollars on their computers that really have the money to throw out there on their computer builds. These are not for people that are just kind of looking for something for college or work or really gaming. The Core i7 isn't really going to give you a crazy performance boost when it comes to gaming either. It has a lot more smart cache than the Core i3 and the Core i5 and it has the same graphics that the Core i5 does. So generally, the uh, thermal output does not change with the Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7. They generally put out the same thermal output. And the uh, i5 and the i7 CPUs are really going to benefit from having uh, more than two cores, even though that the Core i3 has hyper-threading to simulate four cores with its uh, four processing threads it's really not going to perform on the same level that four physical cores is going to and the Core i5 is not going to perform as well as the Core i7 is going to just because of the hyper threading and the uh, increase in smart cache. So when it comes to mobile CPUs that means things like your tablets and things like your different, different uh, laptops. The uh, Core i3, the Core i5, and the Core i7 are a little bit different than the desktop processors. So I believe for all of the cores you have hyper threading support, but that does not really mean anything for the Core i3 and the Core i5 because the Core i3 has two cores and the Core i5 has two cores as well. So you're still going to get your increase in performance due to the differences in the Core i5 and the Core i3 architecture, but you're really not going to see a crazy, crazy jump in 
different processing actions because you have the same exact amount of processing threads. The Core i7, on the other hand, has four cores, hyper-threading, and an increase in smart cache. All of these have the Intel graphics in them, that all of the integrated graphics, so that you don't have to have a graphics card in there if you don't need one, but generally if you're buying a laptop, they'll include something in there if you need it. So the Core i5 and the Core i7 both sport the tur uh, Turbo Boost, uh, but the Core i3 does not. So generally, you are going to have the Core i5 be better than the Core i3 and the Core i7 be better than the Core i5, but it's really not going to make a huge difference. The only real difference is the frequency or the speed that it is uh, going at. So that's pretty much all I have for today. That's the basic rundown on Intel processors. Uh, I'm still new to it, so don't take anything in this video like as a professional. I'm really not a professional. I just kind of know a little bit about each thing from different research, and I figured that I should wrap everything up into a small little video that I know of just for the people that are out buying laptop, buying desktop processors, and different things like that, because I know not everyone is as informed as I am, but I know for a fact that there are more people out there that know more than I do. So if you still have questions, feel free to post, feel free to tell me if I said anything wrong, I might have read something wrong on my uh, paper, or I might have thought something wrong and just said it weird. So feel free to point things out and I'll be sure to go in and change anything that I said that was wrong. Thanks for watching.